Hello, my name is Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel. And today I'm preparing the hotbeds. So uh, let me show you what I'm doing. So the hotbeds look like this when they're fully assembled. Um, and this is a new one that I built this year. This is the one from last year. So I've taken the back off and I'm digging it out. And the top few layers um, are pretty good quality soil. So I shall be using those, that, that layer as the top of uh, the new hotbed and the bottom is still quite manure so the bottom six inches or so so I'm digging that out and uh, that will go into one of the compost bins and hopefully in another six months time uh, that will be ready to go on beds. The problem is that uh, it doesn't really compost down fully uh, with it being wood chips because there's just not enough time and not enough oxygen um, to keep the composting process going right down inside a hotbed. So um, if it was straw or something like that, that would probably be fine. But uh, we don't have straw, unfortunately, in our horse manure mix. So what I'll do is I'll finish digging this one out. And once that is empty of uh, unrotted um, horse bedding then I shall turn that one back in and give it a good mix and then that will mix all the different layers uh, together into a nice uh, planting medium uh, which I will use later on this month. Okay so that's the first stage of uh, preparing the hotbeds. Um, I'll update this video with more info as it goes, as the process goes. Ooh, well this is hard work than I expected it to be. Um, so anyway, I've, I've got three bins here. Um, this bin at the end is full of fresh manure, uh, which is going to be used to make up the hotbed. Um, this one's a mix of manure and leaves, so I'm going to top this one off, uh, like I topped this one off. Uh, I'm just running out of space to put all this uh, kind of partially composted manure so uh, I don't really want to fill this one because this one is my reserve of fairly fresh compost just in case, uh, manure, just in case I can't get any uh, on the site. So yeah, <laughs> I've got loads more and uh, I don't know where to put it. So I'm going to fill this one and see how it goes. Oh, it's done. So uh, that was actually quite a job. Um, and it's for that reason that I don't really recommend hotbeds uh, unless you need to get some exercise in the winter like I do because it's it's pretty hard work um, filling them and emptying them and mixing them and all that sort of thing so uh, anyway uh, that's uh, the job done and I'm pretty pleased and I managed to squeeze all of that compost into that uh, partly filled bin um, I've decided not to turn this one today uh, and mix it and I'm not going to empty that one yet either um, because I've figured out the logistics of uh, where I'm going to put everything so that's uh, all done and ready to go well it's another day and I've decided to fill my uh, first uh, hotbed and the reason that I've done that is because the weather's just going to be really nice for the next probably seven or eight days um, I've got some salads and some carrots ready to plant and some radishes um, and the manure that I've got uh, piled up in one of my bins is nice and warm, it's about 40 degrees so it's definitely on the move so there just doesn't seem to be any point in uh, just leaving it to warm up in the bin and losing heat uh, when it could be uh, fueling the growth of the lettuces and everything that I've got so uh, I'll just show you quickly what I'm doing. So there we go, I've taken the backs off the uh, bin of the compost, off the hotbed that I'm going to be filling. Um, I've got the manure. For every about 10 forkfuls of fresh manure, I've just put a bit of um, already well rotted uh, compost in there just to seed it with some bacteria and fungus and stuff. Um, I'm going to be putting some chicken manure pellets in as well because as you can see this is quite a uh, woody uh, compost mix so just make sure there's enough nitrogen to keep the reaction going and because I'm making compost um, 
I'm going to put some rock dust in there. Show the rock dust. So that's the uh, the rock dust. Um, and so I, I do that because you know what comes out of this compost bin uh, in a year's sorry out of this hotbed in a year's time is uh, compost like that. So I want it all ready mixed. So I put the um, the rock dust in and the chicken manure pellets and everything uh, so that uh, it's all usable as soon as it's dug out. So with that, I'm going to get on shoveling. Now, once you've got about uh, 12 inches worth of manure, you have to stomp around on it. And uh, as you can see, I always wear training shoes. Never wear uh, <coughs> Wellingtons, which would be a good choice for today. But uh, these are just so comfy. And they spend a lot of time in the washing machine. <laughs> so anyway... Um, that will compress it down to about um, six inches and that's pretty essential because if you don't do that then obviously as it uh, warms up the whole thing just collapses and uh, nothing will grow when the soil's all collapsing underneath it so uh, there we go stage one okay that's phase two complete so both of these are full this one is fairly fresh manure and uh, this one is about a month old and you can definitely see the difference well I can anyway um, so one of the things to note is that in late April May early May time um, I will be taking the salads and the um, radishes and carrots and spring onions and all that sort of thing that will all be harvested and so all of these hotbeds uh, will be for super early courgettes um, and other squashes and so the compost does need to be pretty rich because the roots will be getting down into this layer so um, there's quite a lot of nitrogen in here uh, to offset the woodiness of it um, so anyway on to phase three which is to uh, to put the top layer of growing medium on here so for the for this one which is going to be the lettuce bed which doesn't need that much heat um, <coughs> hence it's the older compost mix the older manure mix I shall be using mostly this uh, rich compost uh, that I've dug out of here um, and this one will be much more soil based uh, because this is where the carrots are going Okay, I'm going to get on with that because uh, time's ticking. And I should just mention one more thing, which is that uh, these screws need to be taken in and out frequently. Every, um, every year, uh, these backs need to be taken off. And so I'm using these stainless steel screws, but I'm also trying out injecting kind of this three-in-one into the screw holes, if you can find them. Um, just to make it easier to get the screws out because they do sometimes stick and break when you're trying to get them out uh, so hopefully this will prevent that and if it doesn't well I've learnt something so we will see hopefully it doesn't make the wood rot anyway that's done it'll be interesting to see if anybody thinks that's a good idea or a bad idea. So that's the job all done. Uh, this is going to be the carrot bed. I'll probably stick some spring onions in there as well. Uh, and so that's very much the top quality soil mix. And this is the rougher uh, compost from the pile. And that's going to be mostly uh, salads. And uh, so that's pretty good. Now, I did mention that um, I'm going to be planting um, uh, squash and um, oh my goodness I can't even remember what it's called um, courgettes in this bed and so the way I'll be doing that is I'll be taking um, plants out of the middle popping a squash plant in there um, and this obviously looks quite um, there's not enough much clearance for squash plants uh, and courgettes plants but this will sink by about six inches um, by sort of late, late April time so uh, 
that's the theory anyway so there should be plenty of clearance uh, to get it through till kind of June time probably uh, so that's it and this one's all ready to go and I've still got plenty of uh, topsoil here um, to uh, bed this hotbed plants into and I kind of dug down a little bit just so you can see how deep um, that layer goes so it probably goes down about eight inches uh, maybe nine inches in total and so that gives me uh, four and a half inches or so um, of uh, growing medium which is probably enough um, and uh, so I might just pop a little bit like an inch of compost uh, for my compost bins on top as well and try to get it to sort of five and a half six inches anyway there we go job's done and so it just remains to uh, pop the tops on and do a bit of planting so these are the uh, salads that I'm going to plant so there's some Novara there and some winter density mostly I think I'll plant Novara because it's my favorite and it really stands up nicely in the uh, in the cold weather and we're done the tops on supported we've got some lovely uh, weather coming over the next few days it's a lovely sunny day today everything's uh, uh, salads all planted I'll plant the radishes tomorrow I'm actually going to close this bed up um, just so that uh, everything's kind of given a bit of protection over the first few days um, and I've got loads of spares because at this time of year you always lose some stuff when you're planting so uh, that's pretty good anyway I am going to get some lunch and I'm going to open the frames up and uh, let them enjoy some sunshine and I've just planted up the uh, carrot and the radish bed and it's quite nice to see that this is already warming up it's about uh, 35 degrees um, I'm planting Amsterdam uh, forcing three and good old uh, French breakfast and sparkle three which is an early uh, small radish the um, the sparkle three are on the outside edges and the um, French breakfast are in the middle uh, alternate rows with the carrots and I'll thin the French breakfast out quite aggressively so that they don't uh, interfere with the uh, carrots as they're growing so there we go and this this one not surprisingly next door is not as warm uh, because that's the older compost so that's just nudging up to 20 degrees um, hopefully it will get up to 30 um, we're in a couple of days time and this one will get a little bit warmer than that um, so normally they do recommend leaving hotbeds um, before you start planting them uh, for you know maybe a week or so but in this case because the compost is already um, fairly old um, I thought well I'll just uh, get started as quickly as possible and uh, and that's it I'm just going to put a little bit of fleece over them and then I'm all done and it's another day and the job is finished so Debbie and I have done the uh, second hotbed and that's all full these hotbeds are warming up nicely this one with the fresh manure is now at 30 something there maybe 30 degrees something like that and this one is nudging its way up to 20 this is uh, not quite so fresh so it'll take a bit longer to get going but even so um, outside it froze and these were nice and toasty at six degrees last night so um, it's definitely doing its job and this one is done and I'm not going to plant this one up today um, because uh, this one will need to warm up a bit as well um, so I shouldn't be leaving that put me uh, new lid on these are double skinned lids that I've uh, done for the hotbed um, just so I can leave them open when it's raining and obviously the rain will just wash off them um, so that is pretty good um, uh, everything's open up today it's a nice day so everything's getting lots of sun and I am a bit done in so I am going to leave it at that 
I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. I hope you learned whether hotbeds are a good idea for you or not. If you want to see the results of the hotbed, I suggest you take a look at one of my tours from early in the year, say March, April time, and uh, that will uh, will show you the results. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, and uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you found this useful, give it a thumbs up, um, and that's it. Okay, see you soon.